Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about three lessons that I learned from my first year working as a software engineer at Microsoft. This video is based off a LinkedIn article I wrote right after my one year anniversary at Microsoft. It was the first LinkedIn article that I'd ever actually published. I felt inspired to do it just because I was reflecting after my one year work anniversary and I felt like I had a lot to share. And surprisingly, the article got pretty popular. It got over 10,000 views in the first week. And so a little while later, I figured why not make a video and share it on another platform. So let's not delay any further. Let's get right into it. First, work is not school. Now this seems pretty obvious at first, but there's actually something deeper behind it. For those of us just entering the workforce, We've essentially been in school our entire lives leading up to this. It's easy to take that school mentality and try to apply it to work. Back in school, it was so important to just fully understand concepts before trying to get started on assignments. Otherwise, you'd be totally lost. It was essential to your understanding and to your success to completely and totally understand a concept before starting on your task. This, I found, wasn't really optimal for work. So I tried to take this similar approach for my first job and I found it actually very frustrating. I found myself always looking for documentation that might not exist or just a really solid primer before starting on any task. And honestly, I would be frustrated at the lack of proper documentation for the specific tasks that I wanted to accomplish. But the reality of work is that there are no lectures. There are no textbooks no office hours. I found my mentor and my manager always suggesting to me to really just get started by jumping right into the code and just learn by doing. And at first, this really didn't make much sense to me. But as I continued working and my confidence grew on the team and within the code base, I started to understand what they meant. It's important to realize that your old methods might not be optimal in a new environment. That's not to say that the office isn't a place of learning, it's just the processes are different and that you have to take a different strategy. It's really important to be ready for this change. Be open to the constructive criticism and feedback of those around you. It's the fastest way to adapt to your new environment. The demands of work in school are also very, very different. School is focused around getting ready for the next exam or the next assignment. It's about really developing the individual. The assignments themselves have no inherent value other than the fact that you are proving that you've learned a topic by completing the assignment. The actual assignment itself doesn't really mean much. Like when working on a school coding project, for example, it's usually not that important that that code can work the day after the assignment. It doesn't have to be a lasting product that has to exist past the due date. You just have to make it fit that spec and it has to work for that one day and that's really it. This is absolutely not the case for work. Work is all about creating a durable and long lasting product that will delight your customers. There are many groups that you're trying to satisfy with your work. First and foremost, you have the customer. Then you have your team. They're depending on you to write solid code that can also be maintained by them if they in the future have to do edits to code that you worked on because of new feature work or they're trying to take that feature in a different direction potentially. Then you have your partner teams who also will potentially depend on the work that your team does. And then at a higher level, you have the higher ups in the organization who are trying to determine and lead the vision and the total future outcomes of your group. Now, not all of your day-to-day -day tasks will involve all of these groups, but as you grow in your career, the reach of your influence will also grow. And so it's important to truly understand the overall objectives of your work. Whereas school is an environment that's really just geared towards growing the individual, or for like an undergrad degree, the outcomes of your work aren't really the goal. It's more the growth of the individual and proving that you've learned specific topics that the TA or the professor is trying to teach you. Work is all about creating that product that will delight the customer and that will enable your teammates to also succeed. Second item, find mentors. 
Mentors have been incredibly helpful to me during my time at Microsoft so far. If there are people who are willing to help you, who have been in your same situation and are in a place where you want to eventually be, you should absolutely seek out their help. In my experience, people are generally really open to giving advice. It's honestly pretty flattering when someone who's new to your team or to the company comes to you for help. Any decent person with a couple of minutes to spare is usually very willing to help someone who clearly values what they have to say. There are many kinds of mentor relationships as well. You generally probably already have people that you go to for advice on specific topics. And really to find a mentor, you don't have to formally ask someone if they will be your mentor. It's just having someone solid that you can go to for advice on specific topics. I definitely have people at work that I can ask specific technical questions to, and also just more general life questions. And there are people that I can ask both types of questions to. So if you have mentors that are people outside of your direct team, so people you won't necessarily run into all the time, I'd recommend trying to set up a coffee chat with them or a lunch chat every about month or so, just so you can keep your relationship strong. There's also something to say about mentors who are well connected. It's definitely a huge asset to have someone in your corner who's connected to a number of people who could also potentially be in your corner as well. Someone that can connect you to other opportunities or other resources. I can definitely say that they've had a huge positive impact on my time there so far. Third, speak up. At a big company, it can be really easy to sort of just get into a routine of doing your work and really just keeping your head down and like just cranking out your different assignments. I urge you to fight this. Always try to speak up. Don't be afraid to ask questions to your peers, to your manager, to your manager's manager, or even during all hands meetings, for example. Definitely ask as many questions as you can while you're still considered new as well. It's essentially a free pass to ask whatever you want. It can be hard sometimes because people look busy, but honestly, it's just as easy as going up to someone and saying, hey, when you get a second, I have a question for you, and then going back to your desk. Any decent person will come and help you when they have a chance. Anyone who makes you feel dumb for asking a genuine question is just a jerk. It reflects a deficiency on their part, not yours. And speak up if something seems wrong to you. It's never wrong to speak up for what you believe is right. If that's not received well, then you're probably in the wrong working environment. One of the biggest assets of being at a large company is that you're just surrounded by so many brilliant people. And you should be trying to take advantage of this every day by learning as much as you can from as many people as you can. It's in everyone's best interest to help everyone out as much as possible. Because at the end of the day, you helping someone else ultimately makes the entire team stronger. This helps everyone get better products out faster. So in conclusion, starting a new job is tough. There's no way around that. There are new people to meet and new processes to learn. Your job is to fit into those processes while also using your fresh perspective to try and improve things to the best of your ability. Your team hired you because you have talent and you're very smart. Now it's up to you to bring those skills to the table. If you have any more questions about my first year at Microsoft, definitely drop it in the comments below. If you felt like you learned something useful, I'd appreciate a like. Subscribe as I have more content coming out soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.